Decluttering your life and choosing to own less can often feel a little scary or overwhelming. Take it from me, when I first started my journey, I was overwhelmed, overthinking, and unsure about a lot. I even contemplated the idea of giving up on owning less. Don't tell anyone I said that. <laughs> but that was only until I figured out why I was struggling. You see, sometimes the best approach to overcome a particular struggle is knowing exactly why you're struggling. That way, it becomes easier to move past it and, in this case, clear the clutter. So today, I'm sharing eight of the most common and real reasons people struggle with owning less. And I can talk about these in confidence because, well, some of them are the very reasons I struggle. Reason number one, safety and security. Sometimes we struggle to own less because having more makes us feel safe and secure. And there are a few different reasons for this. Maybe you've invested so much of your identity into the things you own that the thought of decluttering them makes you feel like you'll be letting go a piece of you. And to be honest, this was somewhat true for me. At the beginning of my journey, I identified so much of who I was with what I had. My things supported a persona that I clung to, therefore protecting who I thought I was, providing safety and security. Or maybe the thought of decluttering makes you feel like you'll never have enough. I'll call this the scarcity mindset because it keeps you holding on to things even when you don't need or use them because it gives you a sense of security, a sense of knowing that you'll never go without because you'll always have it. You see, regardless of which example resonates with you, the fact of the matter is that too much stuff will place a burden on your life. But when you begin to let go, you start to realize that there's more to life than stuff and things and you really don't need as much as you think you do. Remember, owning less is not about getting rid of everything. But you should get rid of anything that is not serving you, adding value to your life, or is used enough to justify taking up space in your space. Reason number two, guilt and obligation. Growing up, my dad had a life lesson and a metaphor for just about everything. So I'm going to steal one right out of his playbook and put my own touch on it. You might want to write this down. Guilt will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. You see, sometimes we struggle to let go of things because we'll feel guilty if we do, so we then feel obligated to keep it. Now, this guilt can stem from an item being a gift or the simple fact that we spent our hard-earned money on it. If either of these are true for you, then how do you overcome it? Well, let's start with gifts. Something you should remember is that gifts are given with the intent to show love or congratulations. So when receiving a gift, you're appreciating or should be appreciating the intention behind it by expressing your gratitude. After that, what you decide to do with it is up to you. If you decide to get rid of it, then you shouldn't feel guilty because that gift has already served its purpose as an expression of love or congratulations. On the other hand, if you're feeling obligated to keep something just because you spent your hard-earned money on it, then here's a quick reality check for you. The money is gone, and you're not going to get back what you originally spent on it if you tried to sell it. So instead of focusing on how much you've previously spent, start paying more attention to how much the item will cost you if you decided to keep it. More money, time, energy, and peace. Things you can't get back once they're gone. So you might as well let it go, otherwise that item will continue to cost you more than you bargained for. Reason number three, Wardrobe shortcomings. Now, I'm not talking about having a shortage of clothing in your closet. I'm sure that's the last thing you're worried about. In fact, many of us have more than enough clothing. Too much even. Way too many pieces, and that's the part I want to draw your attention to. Here's an exercise I'd like for you to try. Open up your closet and count how many individual clothing pieces you own. But let me specify. An individual clothing piece, by my definition, is an item that fits into one of two categories. A, it's a clothing piece that you hardly ever wear and frequently forget you own. Or B, it's something that you genuinely like and want to wear, but struggle greatly with pairing it with other pieces to build an outfit or multiple outfits that you can wear many times over in many different ways. You see, it's common to have a closet full of individual pieces, but lack a cohesive wardrobe. And if this is you, then I understand your struggle because this was me. I had a closet full of brand new and barely worn pieces, but I didn't have a wardrobe. And because of this, I struggled to let go because I didn't want to feel wasteful. And there was also a part of me that didn't really know how to build a wardrobe, if I'm being honest. So I feared that if I did declutter, I'd just go out and buy a whole bunch of individual pieces all over again. However, I figured out a way to overcome this, and here's what I did. 
At first, I finally told myself that enough is enough and I started to let go. Secondly, I agreed to not buy anything new until I learned how to actually build a wardrobe that I felt confident and comfortable wearing, but also allowed me to express my personality without the need to have more than I need. And this is the phase that I'm currently in as we speak. Now, really quick, because I have been getting asked about the t-shirts I wear and they're from Cuts. So if you're looking for a minimalist everyday t-shirt, then definitely check them out. I like them because they're simple and easy to wear without overthinking. So if you're curious, there's a link down in the description below that will give you 15% off. Reason number four, fantasy self syndrome. Question for you, how many items do you own and are not actively using that are the result of your fantasy self? Well, let me back up for a minute. Who is your fantasy self and why are so many of us struggling to break free from it? Your fantasy self is a highly idealized image of not only who you want to be, but who you want others to perceive you as being. So when I ask you how many items do you own and are not actively using that are the result of your fantasy self, ask yourself who are you wanting to be and who do you want others to perceive you as being? Here's an example. Maybe you have an overwhelming amount of kitchen gadgets that you're not using as much as your fantasy self thought you would. At the time of purchase, you were telling yourself that you're going to start cooking gourmet meals and throwing holiday dinner parties so your friends and family can see how polished and professional your kitchen looks. But in reality, you're not cooking as much as you thought you would, and you're not actually using any of those fancy kitchen gadgets you bought. In fact, you probably still have the instructions in case you do decide to use it one day. See, regardless of what that thing is, holding on to something for the sake of maintaining an idolized image is the worst thing you can do. So if you're struggling to let go, then I challenge you to question your fantasy self because trying to be someone or something you're not is no fun at all. I promise you, you'll find more joy in being yourself and getting rid of anything that's not truly you. Reason number five, just in case. Now, let's keep it real. How many just in case items do you have? Do you know? <laughs> I mean, we all have them. How many? Mm, that's a different story. <laughs> you see, just in case items is a big reason many people struggle to declutter. We hold on to things that we don't need, but keep just in case because we worry that if we let them go, we might need them later and then regret that we got rid of them to begin with. Now, it's easy to talk ourselves into keeping just about anything just in case. With full transparency, my wife and I were going through some of the leftover items we still have from our wedding the other day. And in doing so, I caught myself mid-sentence telling her something along the lines of, well, someday we might, and then I paused. <laughs> I thought to myself and said, hmm, we don't really need this, and I doubt there will ever be a just-in-case moment where we do. <laughs> See, take it from me, just-in-case items are everywhere. We all have them. But how do we overcome this hurdle and actually start getting rid of those things we don't truly need? Well, the simplest approach is to be realistic and honest with yourself. Start thinking through just-in-case scenarios that might happen. And then ask yourself, how realistic is this? Doing this has definitely helped me, and I'm sure will help you as well, with overcoming some of those just-in-case fears. It's also important to remember that in the rare event that a scenario does come up where you could use a just-in-case item, odds are it's that you probably can't find it, forgot you had it, or are looking to purchase an alternative anyways. Reason number six, prioritizing organizing. Maybe you've thought to yourself that if only I had the right size basket or another storage container or little buckets and drawer dividers, then my home would feel less cluttered. And if so, then you're not alone. This was my thought process for the longest time, and I even went to the extent of redecorating and reorganizing my furniture in hopes that that would make my space feel less cluttered. But guess what? <laughs> it didn't work. See, it's easy to think that all we have to do is organize more or better, and that will solve our clutter issues, but it won't. Organizing is not the answer. Carefully organized clutter is still clutter. It doesn't matter how creative you get or how good you are at playing Tetris and making a whole lot of stuff fit in a small space. If you don't need or use it, it's clutter. So if you wanna own less, stop prioritizing organizing and start prioritizing your needs so you can let go of what you don't need. Reason number seven, past connections. Here's some food for thought for you. The past is hindering your present, which is blocking your future. Let me say that again. The past is hindering your present, which is blocking your future. 
Sometimes letting go of things we used to use and enjoy in the past, but not so much today, can be difficult. Think about an old hobby of yours or your items from your heyday as an athlete. If you have kids, think about their baby clothes or school projects you helped them with the night before it was due. Whatever it is, sometimes we struggle to declutter items from the past because it feels like we're letting go of that part of our lives. Now, personally, I've learned from the experiences that I've had in my life so far that the only way to overcome this struggle is to face it head on. So take a moment and acknowledge how you feel and sit with it for a while. Take as long as it takes you to process those feelings. I found that this is the only way that eventually allows you to move past them and start letting go. Remember, letting go of the past makes room for you to enjoy precious present moments and create memories that will carry you into the future. Reason number eight, sentimental items. I'm not gonna lie to you. Decluttering sentimental items is hard. That's the nature of the game. But like anything else, we have to find ways to overcome this hurdle if we plan to declutter our lives and own less. Now, there are many different ways we can approach decluttering sentimental items. And I highlighted 10 solid ones in a previous conversation that I linked to down below. I highly encourage you to watch and listen to that conversation, especially if sentimental items are the number one reason you're struggling to own less. I'll see you over there. But first, keep growing, keep learning, and always stay true to you. Peace.